Good morning, can you hear me? Very good. Hi everyone, I'm Francesco Ivone and I am a PhD student in the University of Aachen. Um, I'm doing my PhD on, well, particle physics and I'm here at CERN for a period of six months more or less to work on muon detectors. Um, it's a fascinating moment to work uh, in the CMS experiment. So I'm very lucky because like run three has just started. So after a long shutdown, we are, we have just started taking data again. And uh, this is Archie, so I let her introduce herself. Um, uh, hello everyone. So yes, so as uh, Francesco introduced me, so I'm Archie, so I'm a postdoc uh, um, also in the RWTH Ahan, but I'm working here. Uh, uh, as um, you know, on the DT drift tube chambers in the barrel and uh, yeah, mostly my work is involved in the operation, which is now the, 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 the important part because uh, we are uh, officially started the, the, the run three last, uh, last week. And uh, yes, we are uh, taking the data for which we are preparing from the actually from the last three years uh, during the, the shutdown. So yes, we can we can start. So in on the back side of us, uh, you can uh, see the, the the image of the uh, the CMS detector, and then um, I think uh, you already know this. So we have uh, first the uh, this in the between there is this uh, the beam pipe where. Uh, the, 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 the proton proton beams um, collide at the center and then we have uh, this uh, 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 the first the inner detector which are we call the tracker the strip and the pixel detectors and then outside we have the calorimeter so first the electromagnetic calorimeters and uh, which uh, measures the energy deposited by the, the electrons and uh, the photons and outside we have the hadron calorimeters, which, uh, which, uh, which detects the energy by the, the, the hadrons. And then we have the, uh, this outside the muon uh, detector. So uh, a big part of the CMS detector uh, is uh, the muon chambers. So first we have the barrel uh, muon chamber where we have the drift tubes and uh, the RPCs and then outside we have the end cap where we have the CSCs and the, again the RPCs. And then as Francesco said, so he's working on the, on the new detector. I can't see it here, the gem. I think uh, at some point we, we are going to introduce in this uh, picture, but uh, yes. Uh, the gems are the new detector, which are also the part of the, the end cap neon chambers, and uh, they are sandwiched somewhere. So, yeah. If you like, there's also our logo from our university. I think this is a real picture taken some years ago. And there's the Aachen's logo there because there was the, those are the DT's chamber, I guess, right? And they were produced in Aachen. There was a big effort done by our university and our department in the construction of this chamber. Uh, yes, we cannot see here, the, well, some more chambers, uh, which, uh, which are the chambers uh, on which I'm working on. And these chambers go in the end cap of CMS. Um, so let's, if, if you want, uh, we're seeing the transversal uh, section of CMS, but it would be also uh, possible to see gem chambers in the other uh, section. And uh, basically the muon end cap provides information on the triggering for muons and the measuring of the momentum uh, of the muons. And it consists of basically four by now type of chambers. Uh, well, the three technologies. So we have GEM, uh, the new upgrade uh, technology, which is the one I'm working with. CSC, so uh, GEM stands for uh, gas electron multiplier. Uh, and CSC, okay, we have some description here. Okay, very good. Um, so we have in drift. 
yeah, that, because like it's a new upgrade and it's uh, it's the first time we take data in round three. So yeah, the slides have to be updated at some point. Um, but uh, we have DT, so drift tubes uh, in the barrel. Um, and you see like the structure of it. So like what, like what you see there uh, on the pointer, it's, uh, okay, those, okay, yeah, like we have DTs in the barrel and then we have RPC, so resistive plate chambers, both in the barrel and in the end cups. And we have CSC, so cathode strip chambers in the end cup only. And the new upgrade, which started with a big project, which started in 2010, is for GEM. And I'm really proud of it because I'm working on it, but uh, it's a new upgrade is not shown here. And um, it goes in the, like, let's say in the um, high pseudo rapidity uh, region of CMS where a pointer is at the moment. And uh, it will work like the, the, the idea, the main purpose of GEM is to help the muon system lowering the threshold for, 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 for PT during the triggering. Uh, so lowering the fake rate of um, muons. And this work like will be done together with CSC. So it's like a combined effort, of course, uh, with the muon system. So, yeah, the only thing that I think we missed, which is uh, one, uh, also in the CMS, uh, like uh, the solenoid, the, the second term. So the CMS, uh, the magnetic, uh, the magnet of uh, CMS is a, uh, is, uh, superconducting um, coil and uh, it produces a magnetic field of uh, four tesla and in uh, in order to produce such a, um, such a huge magnetic field which is uh, like uh, um, uh, it's i think uh, 100000 times greater than the the magnetic field of the earth and uh, we need um, a very heavy, uh, a lot of material. So uh, sup uh, it's a superconducting coil. And uh, in order to retain this, uh, this magnetic field, you can see the iron uh, return yoke in the, in the red color. And uh, the whole uh, weight of these, this magnet is around uh, 10,000 ton. Um, and it's a it's a big part of the CMS, and that's why we 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 give the uh, this as a name like the, the the compact muon solenoid. So all the um, detectors, the tracker, the and the calorimeters, they sits inside this uh, magnetic coil, while the 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 muon um, muon chambers they they are outside the coils between this uh, this return loop. Yeah, so you can see also the picture that the Zoltan is uh, is showing. And uh, yeah, so this kind of uh, geometry gives a very compact structure, although it's very heavy. So the whole CMS detector, it is uh, 14,000 ton. And uh, where the main contribution come from the magnet, which is 12,000 ton, while the, the, the size of the, the CMS, although it's very heavy, it's very, very compact. So yeah, so like uh, it's a 15 meter high and uh, 21 meters. Uh, Length. Uh, okay, then we can, I think, uh, show you um, uh, going uh, downstairs. Uh, okay, yes. So I, if like the, the, the numbers don't, do not impress you, like you can have a look at this because this is a one-to-one uh, -one, uh, representation of the CMS. And okay, for far away, it might not be, might not look that big, but like as I approach it, <laughs> my, my sides disappears, like my dimension is ridiculous with respect to the CMS experiment. So like, it's really impressive. Um, if you have the chance to get a visit in real life, it's impressive. Um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's really big. And this is like the height, which it's stunning already. But like, if you imagine, if we go back to the slide, the, the length of the experiment is 28 meters when closed. Now, of course, 
the CMS experiment can be open. So it may, it's made by disks and during non data taking. So during the periods of upgrades or um, shutdowns, for example, technical shutdowns, the disks can be actually opened and you can go and have a look and technicians work there and physicists work there. Um, and in that case, it becomes even longer. Like you, you can see the actual dimensions uh, of the experiment. Not to mention that, okay, you have 15 meters high and 28 meters length uh, for the experiment itself. But if you, you will have a look now because um, Archie is going down and will show you all the services and all uh, the cables and all the fibers and the high voltage and all the um, services we need, the supply uh, we need to provide. So cooling, for example, or gas, and it's a massive work. It's not just physics, it's a lot of engineering. It's, lot of, it's a lot of organization. Um, subgroups have to work together and it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a super big collaboration. And you, you, you don't just happen to discover the, the Higgs boson. It takes pl planification and a lot of uh, effort. Um, so I think before we have the picture of the service room, uh, I can introduce you, I can speak a bit about what I'm doing at the moment. And uh, so if we can have a picture of the Mion end cap perhaps, no, okay. Um, anyway, I, I will try to explain you like in the muon end cup, which is uh, the um, like not like which is the part you would see in the other uh, section of the of the CMS. Uh, we have the detectors organized in stations, and the, like we start from station one, which is the closest to. Hey, hey, hi. Okay, uh, and you have the closest, the, which is the closest station to the um, interaction point. And okay, so yeah. uh, sorry, okay. Francesco, to interrupt you. So yeah, yeah sure. so we are going downstairs. So I just want to show that how we enter. So uh, this is the, the the dosimeter, the personal dosimeter, which we required to go inside the, the because the the area was the supervised area or the. Uh, so first you have to scan this dosimeter here and uh, then these uh, the the door which we call the pads uh, they are open and uh, okay i'm going inside and okay <laughs> something is not uh, working okay so i have to try again Okay, it's working, then I have to scan. And now I am entering. So you just got your eyes scanned to get in, right? Oh. Okay, uh, so I think they're, okay, this is how you scan your eyes. This is pretty fascinating. And okay, at some point you have to go down for a service cavern, I guess. Yes, so you see that now the magnetic field is on. So here you can see this flashlight is uh, blinking. And here is the, the, uh, the lift, which we call PM54. And we have to, yeah. So uh, the, you can see it's uh, the level, so minus three, uh, the, the last floor where the experiment is situated. But uh, okay, so as now the beam operation is uh, ongoing, we cannot go. So we'll go to minus two, which we call the USC or underground service cavern, uh, which is I think approximately uh, 88 or 87, yeah. Yeah, I think we didn't say it during the first introduction, but of course the whole cavern uh, is situated at the level of the LHC, which is a hundred meter underground. Uh, that's why, yeah, of course, if you want to access uh, either the cover of the services or the experimental cover, you have to go down. And I think in this, 
Okay, no, no. All right, I can go back. I think you, Archie, will lose the signal once in the yes. elevator. Yes. Um, so we are, uh, the, it's almost here and we are going then inside in, yeah. Yes. Okay. So um, this is the PM54, as we say, and uh, yes, so this is the pressurized lift. So even if there is a fire alarm or something, we are allowed to use, uh, use this lift and uh, not the stairs. Um, okay, so now we go down. So we, we are going here to the level minus two. Um, yeah, so I think you can carry on until we lost the signal. Okay, yeah, I'll see you in a while. Um, so I, I will try to re go back to the uh, to explain a bit more about what I'm doing because I guess you guys are doing uh, your your bachelor or you're, you're finishing up your studies, and at some point you might wonder what to do next. And what I was always fa passionate with. Uh, it was detectors, and I had the chance to continue my experience in the university with a PhD focused on detectors. Uh, so I was trying to explain to you guys, of course, like the, the final purpose of CMS is to take data and to find new physics if possible. But to do that, you have to start with uh, detectors. And in particular, I'm, uh, in particular, I'm working with uh, gem detectors uh, installed in the muon end cap. And at the moment, we have just installed during uh, 2019 and 2020, 144 chambers uh, in the first station of CMS. And the plan for the future is, is to install more, to have uh, the station two, and also in the future, uh, like the ME0 station, which is the, uh, the closest one to the calorie meter we have uh, in the muon end cap. So one, one station hasn't been installed. Okay, Archie, did okay. you say something? Yes, yes. So we are. I just want to show you this uh, this area. So this we are now outside the the lift. So it is the floor minus two, and you can see here the height. It is seven point nine meters, and yeah. So all the, the, the racks, the electronics, it is situated on here. So you can see here the label, level minus two counting room S1. Yeah. Um, okay, so this, uh, the door that you see on my right, this is the tunnel LSE. So yeah, we generally don't go. <laughs> So yeah, we are going to enter in this room. Yes. So here you can uh, see the, the, the shaft actually. So this is uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> 100 meters down and uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is the one that we use to lower down the smaller thing. Sorry? Smaller yeah, smaller thing. So uh, there is one, this thing about the CMS that the construction of the CMS was done on the surface and not in the, in the, in the cavern. So what they did, they, uh, they, 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 they built the detector into the, the 15 slices and then they use the two big shaft. Actually, this one that we are showing on the camera, this is the, the small one. So you can see here on this uh, picture. So this is the, the, the biggest, the big shaft that was used to lower down the, the, those uh, slices or those pieces of the detector. So as I said, the CMS was constructed. I think I'm right. If I'm wrong, let me keep. Uh, yeah, so please correct me, but uh, the, this was uh, constructed here uh, on this, um, in this building here. Uh, yeah, the, where the Francesco is, uh, is uh, standing. And uh, yeah, so the, the, the purpose to do this, that uh, they want to make uh, all the, they want to make this uh, construction uh, easy and uh, everything was um, 
um, uh, available on the surface and then uh, they um, yeah so they uh, there were in total 15 slices and they after they were uh, constructed they did uh, they load them into this shaft uh, with you can see here in the picture so different pa parts they were uh, lowered down it it is like 100 meters and uh, it involves a lot of uh, civil engineering. Yeah, it was uh, one, one, uh, one working day long to, to lower down the one part. So you can see here in this picture when the different uh, parts were lowered down in the, in the, in the experimental cavern. I think the most delicate or uh, part was the ah yeah this is the 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 mion the biggest one, <laughs> the biggest one. <laughs> yeah uh, okay so we are going down uh, we are going inside yeah so this is called the the counting room or the um, how to say uh, the room where all the deck, all the racks, these uh, these uh, holes, the uh, mm, the fibers, the cables which are coming from the UXC. So you see here. So for every every part of the detector, they have assigned a different rack, and then they have uh, all the uh, uh, the the cables and. Uh, so the data which is uh, which we are collecting in the experimental cavern, they are coming to this room through these uh, uh, long. You you see there are lots of fibers and uh, and cables. I can show you. So here is the this this part is uh, for the for the muons. So yeah. So first two detector, for example, they. Uh, they constitute the part of uh, the DT. So here in this two rack, you see uh, these are the readout. Uh, these take the readout data from the from the uh, from the DT, and then bring it here through these uh, optical fibers that you can see in this uh, green color. And then this data will go to the the, the main deck. Okay. Also, there is a one rack about the gem, if I'm not wrong here. Yeah, what you see yeah. here, this is the distribution of the high voltage. So as I yeah. said, we have 144 chambers and we need uh, 72 um, connection to the power supply. So because here you, this HVG11 positive side. Uh, okay. I, of course, like the, 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 the muon end caps are two, like there's one in the positive end cap and one in the negative end cap. So when we talk about detectors or detectors in the end cap, we always say positive or negative end, end cap to uh, indicate on which side we are working on. Um, this is the, okay. Okay. You can no more gem. Like on. okay, I, I get it. I get it. You, you don't want to advertise gem anymore. I did it enough. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So now there are uh, we are here. So if um, there is an actual visit, then and or if you have to go to the to the downstairs. So there is a, another um, another access or mad so it's the same that uh, i entered uh, upstairs but uh, it is for going uh, now in the service cavern so it is like the extra protection or um, so now as uh, the experimental cavern is clo closed so you can see that uh, there is no access available Although during the technical shutdowns or whenever LSC allows some uh, access, so the the detector experts they are allowed to go downstairs and uh, they, they they can check about the issues if there are uh, any. So yeah. 
Um, oh, okay, okay. Like, did we say why we cannot access at the moment? Yes, we cannot. Uh, so the beam operations are going, the beams are there and uh, there is a lot of uh, radioactivity. So from the, um, yeah. So for this, for the safety reasons, the access is, uh, is not allowed. So they close this access until the, um, uh, they are doing this operation. And as I said, so there are uh, special days or we, we call them as a technical uh, uh, shutdown. Yeah. So, yeah, you can see that uh, there is a um, status, the LSC status is uh, injection probe beam. And uh, soon we are going to start another fill. So yeah, so that's why the access is closed. But uh, yeah, so um, as we were talking about the magnetic field, so it's like um, now the magnetic field is around four Tesla and you can see how strong it is and it can, be all, it can also be filled here. And uh, we are at minus two level, but you can see that uh, this is um, attracting, I mean, yeah. Yeah, so this is a seven meter concrete, but you can see that how strong is the magnetic field that you can also uh, feel here, you see. Um, yeah, so as I said that uh, when the excess is there, when uh, the LSC allow us to work on the detector, for example, you have to replace uh, a cable or if something is not working, you have to check then on those special occasion, you can go downstairs under, uh, you have to ask for the access and all. And uh, magnetic field is always there then. Uh, so you have to be like, uh, take an extra precaution and you have to use the non-magnetic uh, tools so that you are, you, you are not affected by this, uh, this magnetic field. Um, yeah, I can comment on this, for example, like before start of run three um, with Jam, we had to do an intervention. It was my first time I was the detector on call for gems, and I had the luck to go down in the experimental cavern soon after, soon before the start of run three. So we went downstairs to fix a problem with the low voltage and I could experience the uh, magnetic field uh, in the caverns, like at Fort Tesla, just before the start of run three, and it was a pretty, pretty nice moment. I took nice pictures. Uh, so, like, if you have magnetic tools, they tend to align uh, toward the, uh, the, 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 the field lines, and so like you can rotate yourself. And uh, I don't know, the screwdriver keeps aiming at the center of the, um, like keep keeps following the beam, the magnetic uh, beam uh, field line. Okay, so uh, here in this picture, you can see this uh, view of the, the, the LSC channel. So you see these are the, 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 the coils and uh, yeah, so inside them, this is the, they, they host the beam pipe, which is, uh, yeah, which is passing through this tunnel and uh, yeah, it, um, yeah, so I, I don't remember if I have been in the, into this tunnel, but of course now it is not possible, but yeah, from the picture, you can see that how, how interesting it would be to work inside and uh, you can. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Archie, are you, um, yes. I, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to be, I think the present, like the conductor of this thing, but I want to ask you a question. So uh, yeah. we mentioned that run three has started and I was wondering what well, like, so you're working with DTs and there's also some kind of competition between subsystems, but okay, we are always working in the same experience. So I was going for DTs, so drift tubes uh, in the yeah. barrel for the start of run three. So, sorry. Uh, no, yeah, how is it going uh, so far? Like, ah. I guess it's uh, like the restarting of collisions, it's um, you 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 have a lot of work to do. There's some. I think the first weeks is always recommissioning. So uh, yeah, restarting. So the yes, so DT on the contrary, uh, as comparison to gems, the DT are like uh, the the old system. I mean, it's there since the starting of the CMS. So so it's rather a, a stable system. But yes, 
this is my first experience uh, to run a system in the uh, during the actual collision so of course it is uh, it is interesting i mean it's not like that uh, we we are not having uh, any issues there are few but okay uh, overall we can say that um, it's a very very nice experience to uh, yeah to see uh, to see your detector which you are working so i am on dt uh, i'm working on these detectors since last four years and this is the first time that i am able to see the detector in a, in the in the collision and uh, it's a, it's a it's a great experience and of course you have to be like uh, uh, attentive or like always um, yeah you can not switch off your phone and uh, all those things but yes it, it it is interesting what's i i like what's um your precise role in the dt collaboration okay so now dt in the dt collaborations i am the run coordinator so run coordinator means i am uh, responsible for the for the operations of uh, of the dt in the in the run three so for example if uh, we are taking the good data so when uh, there is an issue there is a, a board stuck or something is not um, working so for example if some chamber is giving the noise uh, or uh, those kind of things so i have to make sure that we are taking a good data and uh, we are delivering this data to the to the cms so dt is uh, one so uh, they are in the barrel and uh, of course we have also the rpcs but dt are the main uh, main system that provides the trigger to the in the barrel so that's why uh, it um, uh, our job is to ensure that we are delivering the the, the good triggers to the uh, to the from the muon system from the barrel muon system and uh, yeah so dt is the one of the it plays a important role so uh, so for example uh, in the during the first collision um, I mean, uh, there is uh, they they already reconstructed the the Z muons and the two uh, some of the events are uh, the muons are uh, uh, triggered or detected by the DTs. I have, we have the event display, so yes, you can see that how how important these detectors are. Um, uh, I I have I see a very quiet uh, auditorium there. I don't know if anyone has questions. I cannot tell if there are raised hands. Um, uh, otherwise, I can keep uh, asking questions. Well, yeah. well, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Questions? Yeah. Did you pass if? They don't dare to ask questions. Not yet. OK, so I, I, will, be, I, I will dare. Um, uh, OK. Archie, how often does your phone ring at night and it disturbs you? Because like being mm. run coordination, it means that you have to be responsive all the time, right? If something goes wrong, it's your number on the list. Yes. So actually, it's my dog number on the list. But then uh, the first thing that the dog has to do, he has to call me. So like, for example, uh, this morning, uh, it was around, it, uh, uh, fortunately, it was not uh, too early. It was like 6.30 and uh, I got a call from my dog that uh, we are stuck, we are blocking the run. And uh, the other fortunate thing is, uh, was that, that uh, LSC was also stuck. So we were not in the collision. So uh, it means that we didn't lose any luminosity because of the DT. So yes, so it was like 6.30, I woke up, I opened my laptop, then I did some checks and uh, yeah, so I contacted another expert. So there are more experts which are on higher level than me. So if I, if I don't able to uh, find, then I contact my, my experts also then. Uh, so it was found that uh, one power module is failed and uh, yeah so we have to run at that time it it was not early so yeah it, but 
like seven in the morning, we have to come to the 0.5 and uh, replace that code immediately. So yeah, so the things like this can happen. Uh, and uh, during the run three, if it, it, it would be the shutdown, then you don't care. Okay, you can say that I'll, I'll come after two hours, I'll have my breakfast and then I will do this, but okay. Uh, during the run three, even if we were taking the cosmics that time, there were no beam, but uh, uh, yeah, you never know when the LSC will change. So uh, we, we couldn't take the risk to postpone anything that uh, that have to be done. So yeah, so this, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is the difference <laughs> from the, that I'm feeling that uh, the things are changing from the last uh, three years. Yeah, just uh, just to mention, I, I've done my experience as, as detector on call, which means when the detector has a problem, they call you and well, then you report to your run coordinator. Yeah. Um, and but uh, the, the difference is that the detector on call period is like two weeks or three weeks, and then you're free to get your um, time again. But like run coordinators are more, um, let's say, always, intense work. Uh, I see someone time. next to you there. Uh, no, no, so, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it is like, um, how to say, the these are the things that we are uh, we we uh, we were told or we were uh, taught when we take the the safety training. So there is this called uh, self rescue mass, which is um, which is mandatory if you have to get the access to come downstairs. So when I scanned my dosimeter, it 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 reads all type of uh, uh, training that you have in your uh, account. And uh, this is one of the, how to say, one of the important, this is called the safety training. If it, it, it is not, then you, you cannot uh, get the access to come down. So yeah, so this training, uh, they, they ask us, like, uh, they told us that, okay, if there is like some, uh, some fire or some gas leak or any kind of uh, emergency oxygen hazard deficiency hazard or something then you have this uh, you see here in the in the steel this is called the i forget what is this <laughs> yeah so it's in the self rescue mask is inside self rescue right? yeah you have to open this and all these things that this guy is uh, wearing except from helmet, uh, these are inside this. So this nose, uh, this, uh, the, the goggles, and this is the most important. So you have to take the oxygen from this and uh, breathe. Yeah, I think one of the, like the, the hazard there is the deficiency of oxygen. And yeah. imagine being down in the accelerator tunnel or in the CMS cavern, and you have an oxygen, uh, a deficiency, uh, an oxygen of deficiency, uh, you have to find your way back in a place that is not familiar to you. Uh, it's very, very important to be trained. Yeah, uh, before. CMS, yes. For the experimental cavern, I think there are uh, certain regions or area where this uh, mask is uh, required, but uh, I don't think all the regions uh, we need them. There are, okay. So the five regions, uh, X5, okay. So that. Okay, and below the detector. So, I mean, I never went to X5 or below the detector. So I was never wearing this, uh, this mask, uh, but okay, if, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I did the training last week and uh, there's a simulation during the training, right? They, yeah. they, they put you in a like similar environment as in the LHC tunnel and you have to be ready in case of alarm. And well, it's a training, so of course the alarm comes you have to be ready to um, put uh, put yourself uh, a, a out of danger, right? Like to put on the mask and be ready to evacuate. Um, yes. I I don't know exactly where are you. I'm not super familiar with the uh, service so, cover. Yeah, maybe yeah, maybe you can see also this gate. Okay. Uh, so what this is gate is a, another lift. This is PM fifty six, right? So this is the PM56, this goes to the, I think, tunnel, yeah. Yeah, so here you can see. And uh, we generally don't use this lift, but uh, let's suppose that uh, the other lift, which we generally use, PM54, 
So you go from uh, upstairs, then you cross two doors, and then on the right hand side, there is this PM54, which we used to come uh, now downstairs. So in case that is not working, there is some uh, serious problem and uh, people are, yeah. And you can't go there. Let's suppose there is something in between. So then you can uh, allow uh, you. You are allowed to use this lift, or you can use. But I think uh, this is a very. These are only in a very special times. In general, you 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 cannot. You this is closed. Yeah, and if you break it now, at least it's not. Ah, okay. <laughs> we, did, so, we didn't hear yeah. you. We didn't hear so you. in case uh, the you open this lift, the LSC will stop the yeah so yeah, if we open this door <laughs> which is something you don't really want to do during the <laughs> yeah. soon after the start of round three i guess no yes okay i think <laughs> I, I think we we gave a, a an ex, ex, extensive tour of the service cavern if you would uh like to come back to rejoin me because i feel lonely here <laughs> I, I just want to quickly show the, the gas room. So especially because this is the room where we have uh, the detectors from the, from the, which are built in, uh, in, in Aachen. So you sure. see here, so uh, this room contains the gas system for all the detectors. So the gas from the, from the SGX, which is the gas room on the surface, it comes to on uh, on this uh, room, and then uh, from this room the gas is distributed to the to the chambers. Yeah, so the big pumps and also and uh, also uh, it is uh, analyzed here. So yeah, so you can see here the DT uh, distribution rack, and um, it also measure the, the parameters, the humidity, the oxygen and everything uh, so that uh, we, we make sure that we are sending the good gas uh, to the system. It and seems, uh, here, yeah. okay. Sorry, Archie, it seems you are putting a big effort in gas system for DTs. Yes. Is there a particular reason for that? Like, I mean, I, I think it's not only for DT. I know only, uh, a lot about DT, but uh, it's for every subsystem for example you can see here for the csc so i think the monitoring of the gas is one of the important part uh, because uh, uh, a couple of months back we had the issue with the with the rpc gas and um, uh, there were some uh, some impurities that went inside the rpc and that's why they have to uh, put a big effort to clean everything and uh, restart everything. So that if uh, if the gas is not correct, uh, your uh, data is okay, gone. Yeah, of course. Okay. These are yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we are working with the gases detector, right? So yeah. Also, you're... it is for the safety of the chamber. I mean, uh, uh, let's suppose you are sending only the amplifying gas, for example, for DT. The, uh, there is this argon and CO2. For example, the argon fraction is a little bit higher. Uh, yeah, you can you can destroy even destroy your detector. So it, it is very important uh, part. I have I have a question for you, uh, Archie. You mentioned before the BDC, <laughs> uh, so the chambers um, built in Aachen. Can we yes. see them from here? I I'm not aware of it. So yes, so you can see here, unfortunately, I didn't bring the key with myself, so I cannot open these racks, but you can see here, the, the these are uh, um, the, in the pink color. I think it's the institute color, right? Yes, so it's our institute color. So this is the example of one of the chambers. So there are six like this. So the three here and the three in the in the bottom rack. Yeah. So you can see on the camera these. So uh, now you can see only one one on the top and one on the bottom. But there are uh, on the back there are uh, three on the top and three on the bottom. And, and the main purpose. Okay. No. Yeah. I was about to ask you. Please go ahead. Yeah. So the uh, what we why we need these BDC chambers because. Um, so as I said, the the uh, the gas is an important part of the of the chambers, and uh, 
for the DT, one of the main uh, thing that we need for the measurement of the muons momentum is the, the drift velocity, the drift velocity, of, which we call the V drift. And uh, uh, if let's suppose there is a, a small change in the gas uh, percentage, this V drift value can change and then this can uh, disturb your measure measurements. So uh, what uh, these uh, VDCs do, so um, the, the gas which are going in the chamber, so they, the return of this gas is coming uh, on these VC, VDC detectors. So there are five DT wheels and uh, from each DT wheel, the return of the gas is coming in one of these five VDC chamber. Whereas the sixth VDC is used uh, for, the, for the fresh gas analysis. So what we DC uh, these chambers do, these measures the V, uh, v drift, the same V drift that we are also calculating inside the drift, uh, drift tubes. These are calculated also here uh, with a different mechanism, of course. Um, so you, you, measure, are... you measure the drift velocity before uh, entering the, the chambers yes. and after? And after, yes. And then uh, if there is a variation in the V-drift, we can tell that, okay, probably there is a impurity which is going inside the, in the, in the drift, in the gas, or maybe the, the, um, the percentage of the gas is, uh, is changed. Yeah, so this is, these uh, detectors are very helpful to, uh, to keep track of the, the, the gas that is, um, uh, that is inside the, the chamber. So, uh, as I said, uh, there are five uh, uh, drift uh, tube chambers which take the gas return from the five DT wheels. And uh, in uh, each wheel, uh, there are 50 chambers. So, these uh, every chamber is uh, analyzed per hour. So, for example, in order to analyze uh, 20, uh, in total 50 chambers uh, from one wheel, you need like uh, uh, more than 24 hours. But uh, yeah, for actually, every yeah. for every hour, the gas uh, is changed. Sorry, yes, go on. Yeah, no, I, I see there a yellow sign. Uh, why yes. is it dead there? I guess there's something, some kind of radioactive yes. source. So I said What's that, for example, in the DT chambers, uh, uh, the, um, when, uh, the, the particles enters from the beam or we, during the no beam, we take the cosmic muon. So here we use this, uh, these radioactive sources, which are used to produce the, 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 the triggers or the signal. Here, this is our signal. So yeah, like uh, I guess in CMS you have other kind of particles, like in the car, yeah. Yeah, other kind of particles. Yeah, but whereas uh, yeah. yeah, whereas here we are, uh, we know that the the uh, what kind of particle. So this is strontium ninety radioactive source. Okay, so like it's your like uh, uh, source of signals for testing yes. the drift velocity. Okay, yes. I think I I will trigger. I will ask again for questions since we are uh still in the cavern at the moment if anyone has questions uh yeah okay Wait a second. No, there's one Hey, thank, you thank you for the, for the presentation. presentation. My question is, is about, 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 about one question about, about the services. I was wondering ring, 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 if, if uh, um, 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 services are service, service, service disconnected or, 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 or uh, shut down. So, 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 for example, for, for, for the break over Christmas. And the second one would be about the gas mixture during the whole gas mixture system. I'm afraid the voice is 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 very much loaded with with echo. Um, Thomas, once you are back at the at the desk, could you please repeat the question for us? The questions, the questions, 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 questions. Uh, we still see uh, I'm here. Afraid, I'm yeah. afraid this is very noise, uh, very, very echoed. Uh, echo still there. Now it's better. No, you can hear us. Yes. Yes, we do. Okay, it was about services and gas. Okay, I will try a second time. So the first one is about services. Um, are they still connected even for short, 
shutdowns. And uh, the second one was about the gas mixtures. I was wondering if like either for DTs or also maybe for gems, is the whole system closed or do you have some kind of filtering to make sure that the gas quality is all right? And um, do you also add gas over the course of the lifetime of the different chambers? Thanks. I can, uh, I can explain for a gem, for example, the gas is constantly flushing through the chambers. So you, you, it's not that you feel the, the, at least for gems, it's not that you feel them and then uh, it's there forever. We have a constant flow of gas through the chambers and our chambers are like paired in a certain way. So you, it's not that you flush a single chamber, but you make a, a chain of chambers, a, a series of chambers and you flush them all together and you can control let's say a bunch of chambers together i think the the flow can be adjusted for six uh gem chambers together um so yeah it, it's not a closed uh circuit uh i don't know if i i don't know it actually for dt's perhaps archie can comment uh, on that so for dt uh um, during the, the this beam period, we are in the open open loop mode. So it means that uh, yeah, so we are sending the gas, and then the return uh, it's going outside. We we don't uh, recirculate the gas inside the chambers. So only for this uh, this beam period uh, during the collisions, and. Uh, yeah, so far, uh, as the concerned, it should always be there inside the chamber. So for example, you were talking about the Christmas break. So yes, uh, the gas is always there, but uh, in order to save, for example, uh, the, the cost and everything, so we don't use the, the open loop mode. That is, we use the 85% of the gas in the recirculation mode. If and I the, answer. Yeah, there was also another question for services. If they stay connected, uh, I can come uh, stay connected during the, um, the technical shutdowns, for example. I can comment for GEMS. Well, GEMS was just installed, so I, I we didn't really see a big shutdown. Uh, but um, yes, I think the answer is yes. Like we keep the HV connected, um, the low volt. So HV stands for high voltage, low voltage connected all the time, and the gas system as well, and the cooling as well. Um, you you go and disconnect services in case of a problem. Uh, I think that's the main line. I don't know uh, if DTs do it in a different way. I mean, I know that uh, the gas is always there, although the HV and the LVs are off. So all the racks which provide the, the HV and LV, they are off during the, the, the Christmas break. And uh, yeah, so we cannot, for example, um, do anything during that time. But uh, yes, gas is an important part. So it, it always there in the chambers, but uh, apart from that, yeah. At least Everything during is, uh, the Christmas break, you don't get calls, I guess, as a rank coordinator. I, I hope so, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's see what I Francesco and Archi, I think we have to finish in 10 minutes or so to give chance. Yeah, there's some eco. I think we are going upstairs, so we will be disconnected again. So you can take care, Francesco. Sure. Have a safe trip. Okay, Professor, I didn't really hear what you said. I think it's about time. We have to wrap up. Yeah, it's because we wanted to finish that too, and Trogata wants to show her the Meran side. Okay. Um, so I think so I so I so I so I so try to finish in five, ten minutes or so, that's possible. Sure, yeah. Um I I can um yeah, I was trying to think uh, to a way to introduce what Shag Shaguta's gonna say now. Um, but uh, okay, just just in general lines, you have a lot of detectors, HV on, so they are ready to take data, and you have the your data acquisition system connected and in ready. But you have to be precise, and you have to know when to acquire data, right? So you have a um, 
uh, a 25 nanoseconds um, clock, well, sorry, 40, 40 megahertz clock in CMS, um, which is an, in, an interval of 25 nanoseconds. And you could collect data each, each of this um, uh, interval, right? That's why the trigger is important. Uh, you, you can get a trigger signal coming to your back end, so the boards that control the data acquisition. And at that time, the triggering of the, the, the data acquisition, acquisition chain can be triggered, so you actually save data or like you stream the data out. And this is really important because imagine like you have um, a 40 megahertz um, so collisions every 25 nanoseconds, and then at some point, you don't really know when uh, there was a particle or an interesting event going through. You can imagine there are um, hundreds of particles emitted and you uh, perhaps you're not interested in all uh, events. So I think this is where uh, the trigger, it's fundamental. We wouldn't be able to take data without um, the, the trigger system. And that, that, that's why, okay, we have big detectors uh, and they are impressive, but we also have big, um, a big effort like to produce um, sophisticated boards for triggering. Archie, where are you? So we are uh, now in the control room. Mm, so there are two parts so on this side. Uh, there are the, the shifters, which are now taking the, 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 the data. On the right hand side, these are the, you see there are different uh, desks or tables. So these are the stations for the detector experts. So you see here the, the different desks. So for example, uh, this one is for, for the DTs. And uh, yeah, so on, on the front, it is for the tracker. So this part is for the muon detectors, although there is an exception that the, the gem, the, the newest one is, uh, is uh, on the other side in between the HCAL and the ECAL. So you see there is a gem expert working there. And uh, yes, so as I said, uh, this is uh, the, the, the main part. And um, so the, the shift leader and uh, then the DQM, the trigger, and here is the, mm, yeah, the deck. So the deck is the one which is, uh, which is now the responsible for taking the runs. And on this side here is the DCS experts, which controls or which, uh, which take care of the detect, uh, safety for the, for the detectors. And on this side, you can see our Brill uh, experts, Brill colleagues, they are uh, responsible for measuring the, the luminosity during the, the, the collision. So yes, so here it is. So this is where you spend most of the working yes. days. <laughs> yes. So this is our like office, uh, which is a bit different as compared to the analysis, but analysis people, but okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, I think you can rejoin me because we have time constraint at the moment. Yeah. I don't know if Shaguta is already connected and if we want to uh, transition to her at some point. I don't know uh okay yeah she's here hi hi i am connected uh, however uh for my session where i intend to show the mirror site i have a separate zoom room so when you finish there uh, i guess you you'll disconnect and then uh professor heveker had to reconnect to my zoom room and then we will start that's the plan okay i think we can then uh open again for questions uh last round before uh, handing it to uh, Shaguta. I don't see. Oh. All right. Um, I think my last question is going to be about uh, phase two. So obviously, right now you have lots of work to make sure that all the hardware is working for the run three. I was wondering what, par what portion of your efforts is also going towards uh, validating systems, which are then going to be installed for the phase two upgrade of the CMS detector. Thank you. 
Okay, I'll be really quick because uh, I tend to stretch too long. For GEMS, we have two more stations to be installed with GEM detectors. So as I said, we have G11 already installed in place. And for our future, we have also um, G21 and ME0. And these state, these uh, chambers will help the, the triggering of on, on muons and also uh, the measurement of the momentum. So the luminosity will increase and that's why we need more detectors to help uh, and maintain the performance we achieved in run uh, one. I see Archie is back. I don't know if she wants to take this question from here uh, for DTs, if there's uh, upgrades on DTs as well. Oh, okay, she's connecting the mic. Um, Uh, yes. So yes. So for example, for uh, for DTs, uh, we are uh, going to uh, okay. The chambers are okay. We are not going to change, which is uh, also confirmed in the different uh, studies that was that uh, were going actually in the for example in the GIF plus plus. This is the area where we radiate the chambers with the with the luminosity that we are expecting uh, during the phase two. So the from the chamber wise, uh, we found that the DT chambers can survive for uh, for uh, another 10 years or so. So the, the main thing that we are going to change is the electronics part. And uh, for this, we have a called we called as a slice test. So we have a prototype of the new electronics that that is already on uh, uh, one slice of the, the, the detector, so it's on one wheel. Uh, there is one sector which is instrumented with this new electronics and uh, yes, during the run three, this is our uh, motive to test this electronics uh, to be to get ready for, for, for the phase two. Yeah, I think there will be similar, uh, I don't know exactly, but could be there are similar uh, plans by the other detectors which which are going for upgrade in phase two. Okay. okay. So, I think yes. we have to unfortunately come to an end here. So I would like to thank all of those who participated, Archie and Francesco, and also in the background, um, Zoltan and Romy. I think so uh, we, we are done. Look. So if there is no, 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 no. Okay, okay, so we, so we, so we, so we, so we, and we are trying now to switch to Stigata, who will talk about the Meran side. So she's not at the detector, but in order to do so, we close now these uh, Zoom sessions. We, we are running two Zoom sessions in parallel and we try to connect to you. Okay, Stigata. Okay, bye bye and see you in a minute, hopefully.